Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Another episode of our online musical course, and this time um, I'd like to talk with you about the inspiration for the musical theatre from classic lit literature. Um, if you remember one of the first um, classes when we talked about the types of musical, uh, the uh, most popular type was called the book musical. It means the musical with a discernible plot, with, a, uh, with an integrated story, very often based on, on a literary source. And uh, of course, some of these sources um, are more uh, respectable and uh, <coughs> famous and uh, classic than the others. And today uh, I'd like to talk about um, such, uh, such examples, two examples I ask you to, uh, to watch, uh, Oliver and uh, Les Miserables. <coughs> so um, why classical literature? What is it that makes um, classical literature an attractive source for the, uh, for the musical theatre? <coughs> we'll see. Definitely, uh, as with uh, Shakespeare, this might be the element of um, using the fact that the, the source material is already uh, not only uh, quite well known, although not necessarily in the same, <clears throat> in the same um, population uh, fragment that uh, the musical is aimed for, <clears throat> And also the fact that it is already quite respectable. So uh, people with some cultural ambitions or snobberies <clears throat> might be, uh, might be uh, encouraged or enticed to see the classical literature put on the musical scene, uh, just like, um, <clears throat> like Oliver, for example. So... <clears throat> Uh, you may remember, uh, I already, already mentioned um, a theory or a hypothesis uh, coming from uh, the film industry, from the screenwriting um, industry, that basically there are just a couple of um, recycled motives in culture, just a few archetypal stories. Uh, this was uh, put forward um, for example, by Raymond Frensham, Frensham in his book uh, Teach Yourself Screenwriting, he suggests that there are just a few uh, archetypal motives that keep being repeated in culture in different ways. So um, uh, for him, these are um, the story of Achilles, so a hero with a fatal flaw, uh, a Bildungsroman, so uh, an innocent um, protagonist who grows up, uh, like, for example, Candide, uh, the rags to riches story, like Cinderella, uh, the bargain with the devil, <coughs> or a scientist, a man with some ambition, like Faust, uh, the femme fatale story about uh, uh, a dangerous woman, uh, the story of the star-crossed lovers, we have encounters already while talking about Romeo and Juliet and West Side Story. Uh, the story about loss and grief, like Orpheus and Eurydice. Uh, and uh, a few subtypes of the stories uh, about uh, fate, about um, the tragic conflict. Uh, it could be a love story, usually a kind of triangular love story, like uh, the story of Tristan and Isolde, or uh, a story of Oedipus, about a tragedy that cannot be, uh, that cannot be averted, about fate. Uh, so, um, usually the um, classic literature and also the, uh, the literature that's put on uh, to the theatre stage uh, deal with uh, one or more of such themes and uh, you will see that uh, these uh, subjects are also 
uh, are also present in the musical that we are going to talk about uh, today. So first of all, uh, let's talk about Oliver, based on Charles Dickens' uh, novel Oliver Twist, which you may know, uh, if not from the literature courses, then perhaps from the film adaptation. This was uh, Oliver with an exclamation mark. Of course, the exclamation mark was borrowed straight from Oklahoma and uh, it uh, follows the formula uh, started by Oklahoma, kind of perfected by Oklahoma, uh, of the integrated musical. Uh, this was a British musical, uh, one of the first or perhaps the very first internationally successful British musical with uh, music and lyrics by Lionel Bart, um, quite a tragic character, the man who was also um, a composer of uh, pop songs. Uh, if I remember correctly, uh, he uh, died because of his various addictions and uh, he was uh, a kind of tragic rock star persona. But still he is uh, believed by many, including Andrew Lloyd Webber, to be the father of English musicals. So before Andrew Lloyd Webber and the British invasion on Broadway, there was uh, there was Lionel Bart and especially his most successful show, Oliver. Uh, the stage version premiered in 1960, so this is before the rock musical. This is in the, in the times of uh, Hello Dolly and My Fair Lady in the nostalgic musical. Uh, the film, uh, the film uh, adaptation also um, British was uh, made in 1968. So just as the rock musical was about to start, uh, and both the film and the stage version were very successful. Uh, they had, the stage version had a long uh, run. It uh, won several awards, including, of course, the Tony Awards. Uh, the film version uh, was nominated for many um, Academy Awards and uh, won uh, some of them, of course. So uh, this is one of the uh, important musicals in the, in the history of the genre. Uh, and um, also this one is very important uh, because this was not an American production but a, uh, but a British, um, British production. Um, six Academy Awards for the film uh, after 11 nominations, so really uh, quite, uh, quite a big success. Uh, for those of you who uh, are not familiar with the, uh, with the um, written source, with the book, um, we'll talk about it in a little moment. Uh, of course there are changes uh, if you compare Oliver Twist with the musical Oliver. Uh, and I think they are quite symptomatic. They, uh, they give you some insight into uh, how to musicalize uh, a classical literary source. Um, but uh, some of the some of the aspects, uh, some of the main uh, plot lines remain uh, from the novel into the uh, the musical, both the stage and uh, and film version, and of course the central. Uh, plot uh, concerns the title character, the young orphan who tries to uh, to find his uh, his uh, uh, place in the world, to find somebody to love him first of all, uh, and it all begins just as in Dickens's novel uh, with Oliver in uh, an orphanage, actually in a workhouse, which was a very notorious Victorian institution, uh, which was meant to help the poor, but in fact it was um, closer to an oppressive um, institution, something like, uh, like a prison almost. Uh, so we have a chorus of starving or half-starving children 
uh, praising food and dreaming of food and of course uh, Oliver in a very famous scene uh, repeated almost directly from the novel uh, commits a crime in inverted commas uh, by daring to ask for the second helping of food to ask for more uh, and uh, this puts in motion the whole um, story in which he is uh, um, sold off to, uh, to work, he runs away and he is, um, uh, he is uh, sheltered by a group of uh, pickpockets. So uh, we have the, uh, the underworld of Victorian London, uh, we have uh, uh, the petty criminals, uh, and uh, here this is a group of boys who steal from uh, passers-by in the street and who are looked after by uh, um, an adult Jewish man called Fagin who is one of the great villains from, uh, from Dickens's uh, novels uh, but uh, here in Oliver he's not really um, a scary character, he's not really an evil man, he's not really kind of hardened criminal, but um, an opportunist, a, a poor man who steals from those who are uh, slightly richer than him because he needs to eat, because he, uh, he wants to survive in the world and he really cares for those boys. Uh, he is more effective and in a way more caring than the state institutions that are supposed to look after the, the orphans. Um, he, uh, he genuinely cares for them. Uh, there are also uh, two more uh, important characters from this underworld uh, team. Uh, and uh, uh, they are uh, they are uh, Nancy, that is um, uh, that is a young woman who uh, works in the pub. She is uh, basically a, um, um, a bar tender, a, a waitress. Uh, in the novel, it is suggested that she might also be a prostitute, not so much in the musical. In the musical, she's quite uh, um, strictly a, a good-hearted, kind waitress wait, uh, uh, working in a pub and also quite emotionally invested in the, in the boys. Uh, plus, there is... Um, a real criminal, a real villain of the story, uh, Bill Sykes. And if you watch the film version, he is played by um, a British actor called Oliver Reed. He was actually the, um, the nephew of, uh, of the uh, director, Carol Reed, Sir Carol Reed. Uh, and Oliver uh, Reed was a specialist in the roles of villains, in the roles of hardened criminals. Uh, he was also uh, a kind of man uh, with a reputation of being a violent, uh, heavy drinker. Uh, and as Bill Sykes, uh, he really pulls that off and uh, uh, quite importantly, this is a spoken uh, a spoken role. This is not a sung role. He doesn't sing, uh, and he is really uh, the character uh, whom other characters, including Fagin, uh, fear. And he is a real criminal. And uh, sorry for the spoiler if you haven't watched the musical. Uh, he um, commits. Um, the, uh, the hardest crimes, uh, even murder, he murders Nancy, his girlfriend, uh, for helping Oliver. Another important character is a friend of Oliver, uh, uh, another orphan who's been um, a little longer with the criminals, and his name, his um, nickname is the Artful Dodger. And, uh, 
in uh, uh, Dickens's book he's one of the most beloved uh, characters and actually I remember running this course uh, last year two years ago and one of the one of the students told me because at the end of the course I asked did you have um, a musical or a character that you particularly liked and she said I fell in love I absolutely adore one character and this character is the artful dodger in the uh, in the film version of Oliver so um, perhaps some of you uh, liked this character um, as well he's a young boy a teenager who uh, who refuses to be a victim who uh, is uh, funny and witty and as the nickname suggests he dodges out of the uh, dangerous and uh, uh, unpleasant situations quite um, quite uh, easily uh, the differences between the book and the musical of course the musical is much and i say really much more light-hearted uh, you can see it uh, uh, from the very beginning where we have this rather uh, funny song, uh, Food, Glorious Food, about starving children. If you think about it, starving children are no, no laughing matter, and especially in the Victorian context. Uh, this was a serious problem and there were actually people dying of hunger. And here we have a funny little chorus. Uh, then all the criminals who are basically likable characters, with the exception of Bill Sykes, uh, who are just people trying to get by and who are um, quite um, uh, good for each other. They, they, they form a community, something that uh, uh, the society fails to do. And uh, of course, in any good musical, you will have big group scenes. And uh, uh, Oliver is quite famous for this. Uh, so uh, probably the most famous, the most celebrated group scene uh, is Consider Yourself, when the Artful Dodger welcomes Oliver into the community of the London low life. And you might say uh, these are people who are poor, who are um, hungry, who are uh, really struggling to survive. And it's um, realized in the form of a happy-go-lucky chorus with, uh, uh, if you watch especially the film version with very elaborate choreography, which is a strong point of this musical. Uh, and then you have all kinds of um, happy-go-lucky choruses uh, like uh, Um Papa which is a bar song, a, sing, a, a kind of drinking song uh, which is um, uh, you've got to, to pick a pocket or two sung by Fagin and his gang when he instructs the boy how to steal uh, from, the, uh, from the people in the street uh, also, the song that I would like to draw your attention to particularly, I'll give you, uh, I'll get you a link, uh, the song called Who Will Buy, which is quite important. And uh, if you ask me which, uh, which song for me is the key to the whole musical, I'll say this one. Um, it's usually quite uh, uh, disregarded. It's um, in the film versions at the beginning of Act 2, because the film is also... Uh, divided into this kind of theatrical um, uh, system of acts. So um, when Oliver is, um, uh, is taken up by, uh, by the kindly uh, middle class gentleman and he wakes up and he sees the, the whole uh, street uh, waking up in the morning and people coming to sell different products and the whole society coming together through the different activities of people selling and buying and doing uh, their daily uh, daily chores and this is quite important because if you remember this is the boy who never knew this kind of life this kind of society he knew two things he knew how to beg and he knew how to steal. He never knew how to buy and how important 
for the society it is um, that capitalism continues. This seems to be really uh, the, the kind of um, bottom line of Oliver that if everybody does their little thing, the society will work well. So he continues about it.